In a previous video, I showed you that you can cross-coordinate, is what I called it. You can cross-coordinate yaw and roll to make it act as if you had less up tilt on your copter than you really do. Uh, you can undo the coupling of yaw into roll that occurs when you have camera up tilt, or the apparent coupling anyway. Uh, so I hope you all enjoyed that video, uh, and you could see that I was a little sloppy with the sticks. The yaw didn't always end at the same time that the roll did, and, uh, and, and it wasn't always exactly the right rate. And so, obviously, with practice, you can get good at anything, right? But why should you do that to yourself when there's an automatic CLI setting in Betaflight that will do it for you? So, the command is set roll yaw cam mix degrees equals the number of degrees of camera up tilt that you want Betaflight to pretend that your copter has. So, let's think about this. Let's break this down a tiny bit. <clears throat> you know that in order to coordinate turns, if you have up tilt, you need to add both roll and yaw to keep the horizon at the same angle. So if you had zero camera up tilt and the copter was hovering flat, then you would just use the yaw stick to turn and the copter would spin in a flat circle. But if you have camera up tilt and the horizon appears level, the copter is actually pitched forward. And so when you yaw, if you want to keep the horizon flat or at any other angle, you need to add some roll in. And the amount of roll you need to add depends on the amount of up tilt you've got. The more up tilt you have, the more roll you've got. Let's say you've got your camera at 45 degrees. So now the horizon appears flat when your copter is pitched forward 45 degrees. If you set this parameter to 45, then when your copter is pitched forward 45 degrees, it will automatically add in the right amount of roll so that the yaw stick turns you flat. And you'll spin in a flat circle, pitched 45 degrees forward. And you can, you can, to get out your copter and you can sort of play with it and try and picture that, right? The copter would be spinning and it would look like it's kind of like a top or it may would transcribe a cone, the frame of the copter would, okay? So that's how this works. Well, I, okay, that's how it works in theory, but how does it work in practice? Well, I tested it out and I'm going to tell you, okay? And I'll give you my conclusions at the end as to the best way I think uh, to use this. And by the way, if you have camera up tilt, and if, especially if you have more extreme camera up tilt, I do think this is a good parameter that's worth using. Uh, I'll tell you more about that after we take a look at some flight video. Okay, in this example and in all the examples, my camera has 43 degrees of up tilt. And in this example, I have 20 degrees of up tilt compensation dialed in, which means my copter should fly as if it had 43 minus 20 equals 23 degrees of up tilt. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some rolls. And as I do the rolls, I want you to notice that the left stick is moving to cross coordinate with the right stick. Here we go. Okay, I'm not doing that with my fingers. That is automatic. Betaflight's doing that automatically. I'm only moving the right stick to do the roll. Again, here's another example. That's automatic. I'm not doing that. And you can also see if you watch the rolls that they don't have as wide of a swing as the, when you have 45 degrees of up tilt. They are more centered on a focal point that is in the camera's view, as opposed to a focal point that is down off the bottom of the camera and we're swinging around wildly. I do like that the rolls uh, look more centered. They don't look like, they look more like axial rolls and less like you're swinging around like crazy. Here's a real nice slow one for you. You can really see the effect. And there is a flip over and uh, 180 roll to see how much up tilt I end up with when I do that. And it's less. It's less than the previous example in my spotlight. Here I'm going to do a, a more aggressive split S over the tree, and you'll see as I roll 180, I don't get as much camera swing around to look down as, as I normally would have with 45 degrees of up tilt. Here I'm going to do some snap uh, rolls to inverted, 
and you can see how much uh, swing down the camera has. And it's been significantly reduced. So I'm not looking down at the ground as much as I normally would be with 45 degrees of up tilt. So then I went to 40 degrees and uh, it was very, very disorienting and unusual because as you watch me flying here, you're going to see me turning left and right and you're going to see both the yaw and the roll stick moving together to make coordinated turns. But actually, I am using 100% the yaw stick to make these turns. All of that coordination of yaw and roll is being done automatically by this parameter. And in fact, during the times when I was pitched back a little bit and not going very fast, I actually had to put in opposite roll to keep the copter to, from turning into the turns too hard because this parameter was so high. So right now I'm just like trying to feel out. It's so confusing to be turning like this with just the yaw stick. It's just not what my brain is expecting. And here's some rolls. And if you watch these rolls, you'll see the copter gets a little bit out of whack. And the rolls are actually a little bit slower than they normally would be. So I pretty much immediately knew that this was not, I didn't like this, this wasn't right. And I flew back and landed. Before I go on, I do want to just take a closer look at this roll so you can see what I'm talking about. So one of the things I noticed was that the rolls were not as clean with 40 degrees of compensation. And if you look at the end of this roll right here, there's drift to the right, right there, yaw drift to the right. And I think that's just that the yaw axis cannot spin up and down as fast as it's being asked to, even on this uh, relatively high performance copter. If we watch this again, I do want to point out, though, that the copter is rotating right around the center of the screen, pretty much. And that's saying a lot, considering there's 43 degrees of up tilt. So the feature is definitely working. Another thing I want to show you is that the maximum roll rate that the copter can achieve seems to be slightly reduced with 40 degrees of up tilt compensation compared to 20 degrees of up tilt compensation. And that may be because the copter's ability to yaw fast enough to cross coordinate the roll is limiting the overall rate that can be achieved. I'm not 100% sure about this. I checked several examples and picked what I thought was the best one to show you here, but it's still not a perfect example because I'm only human. So here we've got 20 degrees of up tilt compensation on top and 40 degrees of up tilt compensation on the bottom. And I'm going to freeze it right here at the point where I start to end the move because I didn't end both of the moves exactly the same. And you'll notice that the top one with 20 degrees of up tilt compensation is further into the move than the bottom one. So the roll rate seems like a, and that, that matches my sort of uh, subjective feel while I was doing the moves and flying. Uh, it felt like it was a little snappier with the 20 degrees of up tilt than with the 40 degrees. So what's my final conclusion here? Uh, I have settled on an up tilt of 22 degrees uh, with an actual camera up tilt of 43 degrees, giving me an effective camera up tilt of 21 degrees. And what I find is that with this setup, uh, my rolls are much more sort of pure, but I still get a little bit of that swing around effect that can, I think it makes... Uh, like split S's and, and snap 180 rolls more a little more dramatic than if it's a completely pure roll move. And the other thing is with that amount of up tilt compensation, I can do completely flat yaw spins without having to add in any roll at the typical pitch forward that I'm normally at when I'm going at a normal cruising speed versus just an all out all out crazy speed when I, I wouldn't be doing a pure like a flat yaw move at an all out crazy speed. So what that means is that if I want to do a move like the <clears throat> the flat 180 yaw followed by a 360 roll that has the uh, <laughs> the uh, unfortunate name that was given to it by the drone racing league uh, that I featured before. If I want to do that move, then I just whip around with the yaw stick. I don't really need to think about coordinating roll to make that yaw flat. And that's really nice. So that's the right place for me. With, with 22 degrees of compensation, I don't find that my snap rolls are any slower or destabilized. It's just all good and no bad. I just have to learn to adjust my, my uh, sticks a little bit. So 
as you watch my stick overlay videos going forward, if you see me cross-coordinating snap rolls, you should know that I'm not actually doing that with my thumbs as much as I'd like to just not tell you and have you think I'm being an awesome, awesome pilot. Uh, it's, it's this setting. And I suggest that you play with this setting and find a value that works for you. If you have, say that you have less than about 20 degrees of camera up tilt, then I, I probably would just leave it alone and just fly, right? Because that's, you know, that's not a huge amount of up tilt, although I'm sure to some people it feels like a huge amount. Uh, but if you're in the realm where you have 30, 35, 40 degrees, maybe more of up tilt, then I heartily recommend checking this out uh, because it can really uh, bring the copter's handling back down to a sort of a human realm and make it easier for you as the pilot to, I mean, you could learn to just cross-coordinate manually, but if this is a feature that has all upsides and no downsides, why not spend your time learning other things that are, you know, more useful for you than, than that one particular trick? Anyway, play with it. Uh, work your way up uh, and, and go slow and be careful and have fun, as always. Well, that's it for now. I uh, hope you enjoyed this topic, and as always, happy flying.